All right, well, here we are again with two of my favorite men, Brett Cook of Exploration Insights and Mickey Falp of the Mercenary Geologist. However, there are a few things that are different. Different city and a different bottle this time, right, Brett? That's right. Today we're drinking Jim Beam, which is my mother's drink, or my grandmother's drink, I should say. So, <laughs> cheers to her then. Cheers to and this time I'm going to have a sip because I got a lot of <laughs> feedback saying I didn't drink the last time. So today, gentlemen, since it is Halloween, I'd like to stick to that theme and talk about some of the tricks and treats that you've been hearing at conferences this past year. Brett, let me start with you. All right, I'll, I'll tell you one of the real easy um, screens people can use, any investor can use to screen out the tricks of the trade if you're in the, in the junior mining industry. If a company on their website has the American flag, the Statue of Liberty, gold bars with the American flag across them, cowboy boots with the, with the American flag or anything about American gold that appeals to people's patriotism, avoid it. It's no different than the politicians wrapping themselves in the flag. Wow, interesting. Mickey, what do you think of that observation? Well, I'd like to ask Brent, does that also apply to the Canadian maple leaf? No, I don't think so. I don't see that as a big deal in Canada. I, it's, it's more of an American thing where companies, in my view, are appealing to people's patriotism and love of America, and that tells you, to, in my experience has been, that's definitely a red flag. So are there not good mining opportunities in the U.S. though, Brent? No, I'm not, I'm not talking about right. actually mining in the U.S. Right. I'm talking about how our company presents themselves okay. on their website. Brent, how about yourself? Well, I would say that... Sorry, Mickey. Thank you, Danielle. I would say that the thing that, that is a red flag for me most are companies that would do what I would call mining the stock market, and they're not serious about their business. And, you, and they are essentially... Uh, instead of trying to build a mine, they're they're using the stock market to to uh, wow. to enhance their own pockets. So you can uh, determine this by companies that do repeated share uh, uh, financings, where they dilute time and time again, and they pay themselves big salaries. They have big G and A, uh, and so they'll run the stock and let it fall back, and run the stock and let it fall back. So essentially, what they're doing is they're living off a public company through salaries, options, and this constant up and down of the stock market, especially if they sell into the into a, a rising market on news. Brett, thoughts on that? No, that's that's a real key issue. That happens all too often in this sector. Um, it's it's tough to catch a lot of times, and I think there it goes to management. I mean, if you're going to invest in a junior mining company, get to know the management. There's a lot of good people out there. You don't need to waste your time with scumbags. How often do you hear of clients who contact you and say, you know what, I've been had? Uh, it happens more often than you'd like to see. I used to work at a, an analyst at a brokerage firm, and a, people end up with a hundred stocks in their portfolio and they don't really understand why they got them. The, the taxi driver told them about it, or the, you know, their brother, or they heard about it. And a lot of times people are influenced, their greed reflex is stimulated by these uh, mail outs and such that go out where they show a company with, you know, X amount of billion dollars of gold in the ground. It's only selling for, you know, $5 an ounce and Gold Corp is going to buy it for $2 billion. You need data, you need facts, and don't get, you know, people get taken in just by the greed factor, an easy, a quick buck. Mickey, clients reach out to you often? Absolutely, and I hear people, they contact me all the time, could you please review my portfolio, well, or what do you think about this company, which I put this 10% uh, uh, of my net wealth in, and now it's trading at one-tenth of what I bought it for, and all I can tell those people, number one, I'm not a certified financial advisor, so I can't give them uh, uh, stock picks or recommend to buy and sell stock. But what I tell them is you need to learn how to do your own due diligence. You need to be able to evaluate a company on share structure people project, find it when it's undervalued. You do that through hard work. I think that most investors and most people tend to take the easy way out. They probably have, have an inherent laziness, and that doesn't work in this market. You absolutely have to, to study a company, and if you can possibly, any way possible, get to know the management. And that's why we come to these shows, Brent and I, because we get one-on-one -on -one with management. You get to know these people. We can sit and look at somebody straight in the eye 
you learn a lot about right. that person, especially right. when they are in a in a promotional mode. And all these guys have to be in promotional mode a good part of the time. Right. So it almost becomes like a part-time job where you have to study the company, part-time or maybe full-time. Well, for for us, it's yeah. full-time yeah. job, but most people don't have that luxury. Right. But but it's more than a hobby. It, it, if you right. want to make money in this business, it has to be a part-time job. That's a great way to put it, Daniela. Now, we spoke about some of the tricks, but what are some of the treats? What are some positives uh, that stick out that people should look out for? Brett. Again, I, I, obvious, the obvious is a big discovery. When your junior company goes from 25 cents to $12 based on a real discovery, that's, that's the treat in this game. But I, let's stick with the tricks. I, okay. I, I, me, and Mickey, me and Mickey see a lot of tricks, and I'll, I'll throw out one. But I, it comes around every 10 years or so, every bull market, and that's the, the gold sands in... Arizona and Nevada. And this is where a company will go out and they, they claim they've got a massive gold deposit, but they can't detect the gold with ordinary methods. It's only a special technique that they're using to get the gold that they can find this in. And that suckers in a lot of people. And, and, and you know, usually it's dentists. To be honest with you, dentists always get suckered into that sort of thing. Dennis. Dennis, Dennis, why Dennis? Well, Dennis they're they're falling for the drills or no, what, Mickey? No, well, I think what they fall for is they handle gold all the time because how many people have gold fillings and, and they get those fillings uh, taken out or replaced. So every dentist I know, and I actually know some high net worth dentists who are investors, they always have gold. So that makes sense to me. Uh, carrying on with this, and the, it, we call these uh, desert dirt scams, and I would caution investors to be skeptical every time they hear the word platinum because there are very few areas in the world with significant platinum deposits. It's notoriously difficult to assay for. So anybody that tells you have platinum out in the desert right. and they're going to scoop up some sands, that's not going to work. And, and they always have a special assay method for platinum that no one else can do. That's really good advice. Any other uh, tricks? Well, sticking with the desert sands, I draw a circle around Las Vegas, and the closer the property is to Las Vegas, or I should say, certainly the closer the company is located to Las Vegas, the more red flags that yeah. raises. If the corporate <laughs> headquarters in Las Vegas, right. big <laughs> red flag. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, um, any other tricks we'd like to share before we conclude this segment? I think a, a, a positive one, and something that people can use is, uh, if a company is legitimate, when they put out a news release, there should be maps and sections to back it up in a geologic background. Even if, even if you don't understand what's being exactly said, if you can look and see that they've got maps and sections, you're at least somewhat assured that they're trying to get the information to you and they're competent and probably honest. Right. Mickey, final you thoughts? Know, a, a treat always is a company with management that is very... Uh, judicious about their financings. They do financings at higher and higher levels. Uh, they manage their cash well, and they put the majority of their cash into the ground through the drill, and they don't take it in salaries and options and general administrative uh, expenses. Well, that was great, gentlemen. Thank you so much. We'll, uh, we'll be back next time. Different city, different bottle, but the same faces. Thank you for watching Kiko News. Cheers.